Hi there, uh, my name is Russ Powell. I'm a workforce performance improvement consultant from Santa Rosa, California. Glad to be here. And uh, my first exposure to HPT was back in Atlanta. I had just finished graduate school and I was uh, working in Atlanta building and facilitating training programs for Atlanta-based businesses and some that were not, um, MCI, Franklin Covey, some of those guys. And um, I kind of stumbled across ISPI. It was actually NSPI at the time. And uh, come to find out, you know, my academic background was in psychology and counseling, education. I was trained to work with students with disabilities. And I discovered I would rather build training programs. And as I was building training programs, I began to see that my programs were kind of like um, sending a child with behavior problems to psychotherapy, only to have them return to a non-supportive environment and end up with you know the same destructive behaviors they had before and there's a really clear connection for me to make and I found that uh, people in ISPI or NSPI had a lot of tools and techniques that could help me uh, help my clients do more with the training efforts I was involved in and um, my relationship with ISPI was secured uh, the, the year before the Atlanta Solim Centennial Olympics, the, the year before Atlanta hosted the Olympics, it was 95, the conference was in Atlanta, so I had a chance to attend, met lots of great people, and had been a member in conferences on and off since that time. So, um, and, uh, so the next question is my biggest influences, and that's kind of tough to answer because I stand on the shoulders of a lot of extraordinary people. Um, but at the top of that list is um, Tiagi. I've been a big fan of Tiagi's for years. Someone who can make fun of things that I hold dear and at the same time use them effectively. Count me in your fan club. So uh, I've been a big fan of his. There's a consultant out of Northern California, a guy named Chris Holmberg, who introduced me to uh, Bob Maker's work, in particular his uh, collection of books called The Six Pack. And um, so he was my first, what, academic introduction to HPT. Um, loved that stuff. And then not long after I was working with Bob Maker's material, I got hired by the U.S. Coast Guard, actually a contractor for the U.S. Coast Guard in Petaluma to help run an instructional design team for their uh, training center in Petaluma. And there I got exposed to Joe Harless and his ABCD method and became a fan of, of his work and uh, the rigor that uh, is, is a part of that. So also on the list would be uh, Alison Rossett, uh, Jeannie Farrington. Um, just recently I was at a program with Roger um, Chevalier and he gave a lot of great tips on performance consulting. So we can add Roger to the list as of uh, this, this week as well. So th those are the highlights of the list. But a lot of really extraordinary people and I'm really indebted to them. So um, next question is about my 30 second elevator speech. And that's, that's a good one because I... I usually open with training. I tell people that if, if I say I, I'm a performance improvement consultant, people's eyes roll back in their head. So I usually start with training and explain that I build training programs and tools that support training. And uh, you know, people are quick to agree with me that training is expensive. So I offer to help look at solutions that might be faster, better, cheaper than the traditional training. So I help them do. Uh, an analysis, we come up with some solutions. Sometimes that solutions in involves training, and if you need training built, I'm your guy, I'm really good at that, I can find other people to do that as well. Um, but I'm working with some clients now where all we're doing, we're building some job aids and uh, uh, doing some business process documentation. Uh, that's a common thing for me these days. People come to me saying, Russ, I need training. I say, let's look at your procedures, and I get a deer in the headlights. And so we often start with our procedures, and a lot of times we don't even need to go to training. You know, people can, can learn from the job aids without training. So that might have been more than 30 seconds, but that's kind of how I get into to what I do. So, um, and my next focus, um, don't laugh at this, but analysis. I've been doing analysis for years, but it seems like every time I'm here at a conference, I learn new tips and techniques uh, for uh, doing analysis. So wish me luck with that. Um, and an HPT term that I'd like to define, I thought about this a lot, and I think the single most important phrase that I picked up over the course of my career is accomplished performer. And the reason for that is, is before I was introduced to accomplished performer, I used subject matter experts. And 
subject matter experts to me are the guys that have the theory in their heads. And they may have field level experience, but it's the accomplished performer, let's define that person as the person in the field doing the work every day. So I like to get access to those folks. So I ask for them up front, and more often than not, I get them. So you know, if that's new to you, I encourage you to use the phrase accomplished performer. It's the guy in the field doing the work every day. Get access to them. So, um, and uh, I think that's about it. I guess I'd like to say, you know, I'm not a famous author, and I don't speak, not often, before large organizations, but I'm in the trenches doing this work every day. And enjoy coming here to conferences to pick up stuff. If you're in the same kind of boat, I would love to encourage you, pat you on the back, and say keep up the good work. So uh, thanks.